For the past couple months, I've been trying to hack the TikTok, TikTok algorithm, algorithm, and I think I found a way to do it. I make a form of educational content, which most people would refer to as infotainment, trying to take topics like this, this, and this, and put it on TikTok as short videos. Great, right? I only have one issue. The videos keep flopping. And one of the major reasons why I think this happens is because TikTok's user base has a notoriously low attention span. Now, there's a couple things you could do to get around this. The first thing you could do is have a gaming video behind your normal video. What this does is distract the viewer for the most part and gives them something else to look at while you're playing your video. I tried this twice and you know what? It actually worked. But I don't think it's sustainable because my TikTok account is faceless and so nothing sets me apart from other accounts to do this. Now I'm gonna be conducting an experiment. Can I reach 100,000 followers in seven days? Posting content in probably the worst niche on TikTok. And here's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, so here's my plan. I scoured the depths of what I like to call info talk, and I found a wonderful creator, Dylan Page. After after the analysis of Dylan's page, no, okay, I found about three reasons why his videos do very well. He does current events and also does countdown videos, things like most attractive names, richest countries, stuff like that. Depending on what the video is, countdowns build anticipation and therefore viewer retention. There's also another reason I think his videos do well. Instead of gaming videos, Dylan uses videos of himself. He's quite animated during the videos, he sounds very enthusiastic, and he's also quite handsome. Which helps in life in general, but especially on TikTok. However, for the most part of this journey, I have chosen to be faceless on my TikTok because I didn't want to leverage my stunning looks and I'm also deathly afraid of what my family and friends would think. But I'll be changing that. However, I think I need to create a form of shock value. So I'm gonna make a 3D character of myself and I think this will make my audience unsettled and make them pay more attention to the video. Now the second part of my plan is using something I learned from this guy. Now, how did this guy manage to accumulate millions of views consistently while making content that doesn't rot the human brain? He doesn't have spazzy edits, no secondary content. He doesn't even show his face for the most part. His secret, ladies and gentlemen, which is about to be my secret, is his music. Let me explain. Research shows that humans are susceptible to something known as negative... Ah. <laughs> Something known as negativity bias, meaning that we're drawn towards, fixate, and pay more attention towards negative stimuli. Now, you could either take advantage of this by being absolutely flagrant and pissing people off. The time you spent cooking, if you dedicated to kickboxing, you could have got paid. Or just replace the negativity feeling of anger with fear. Now studies show that negative information causes a surge in activity in the brain. And so this was my game plan. I was going to hack the attention span of TikTok's audience using scary music. I spent the next couple days editing the videos with this particular style and posted them. And we're in. Now as a control experiment, I'm going to use the 3D face and videos with spazzy edits to cater to the shorter attention span audience on TikTok. Just so I can see how the two videos compare. If one does well, then it'll help me regardless. I also think that the 3D face is jarring enough, so I'll be able to get views regardless. And let's see how it goes. It's not looking good, Brev. It's not looking good. So on day one, we posted two videos. One was a scary video and the other one was just a normal video with like spazzy edits to boost retention. They both flopped. And I think the reason why the first one flopped, like the scary video, was just because of like storytelling. I don't think I wrote the story that well. And it was a bit, it was meant to be longer and I decided later that it should be a shorter video. and. Obviously, I had to cut out some parts, and I didn't, like, build the story to be short. You know what I mean? Yeah. The second video, which had all the edits and stuff, I actually made that story well. I just think we were unlucky. Um, sometimes you make these videos, and you don't, you don't go anywhere. But I think we could try again, and I think we have potential. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes.
So the videos didn't work out and by now you can tell that it's pretty hard to grow on TikTok without doing trends. And I'm progressively making the videos better, but they're still not doing well, so I think we're gonna have to try something else. So I have a final three step plan to make our videos do better. First thing, we're gonna try the gaming trick again. We're gonna put a gaming video under our main video just to keep the viewers distracted. The thing is, trends have a lot of social proof. So if you've heard a sound before, you're gonna know that the video is gonna be funny and or interesting. And so we're gonna use the social proof that trends have and try to make our videos blow up. The second thing, we're gonna try duetting a video, which is when you play your video immediately after another creator's video, capitalizing on their success. Third thing we're gonna try is countdown videos. Remember we got this from Dylan's page, and we're gonna see if countdowns help boost our retention. I spent several hours every day of this challenge editing the videos I was going to post. I tried a couple different methods. I tried making a 3D face so it would be jarring. I tried using scary music. I tried using gaming videos. I tried everything I could think of. And the thing is, these videos take so much longer to make that producing them at scale, which is something that's really important with TikTok, is pretty difficult. <sighs> um, so this challenge has taken an unexpected turn. Um, now I could go on and on about how I went through the rest of the challenge. But the truth is, when you're working with an algorithm, like on TikTok and on YouTube, Instagram, whatever you're doing, it's pretty unpredictable. Yes, it wants new things, and especially on TikTok, it wants new things, but it wants ideas and formats that provide like hair. insane retention compared to like what's already on the platform. So it can send those oh. videos out and it will be recreated because people want to take advantage of what's working. So the algorithm, even when hair. it makes new things, now let me tell you the disadvantage of TikTok, right? I really thought it was very glamorous, right? You get to build a following much faster than you could on any other platform, and it makes sense. But the problem is when you're making content that is quality over quantity, then it's not really a good idea because there's a lot of room for growth. Now, I'm obviously coping. At this point, it's obvious that I failed in this project, but it's an experience I'm sure a lot of people in the creative space can relate to. Uh, sometimes things just don't work out and you have to keep going, but I genuinely believe that social media is 90% skill. Okay, maybe 85%, but... I actually have an idea that I'm pretty sure will work. It takes advantage of trends and takes advantage of robots to do it for me. I'm gonna make the algorithm work for me in the next video. That means a couple things, but you have to subscribe to see that video next week.